Last week on MasterChef Australia. You Aussies are fantastic. MasterChef UK's John Turow put our chefs to the test. Plus, two teams took part in our most daring challenge yet. <laughs> and for Aaron and Trevor, their dreams were swept out to sea. Have fun, guys. Tonight, our final ten chefs are put through their paces. Well, guys, taste test. And first up, their taste buds are put to the test. There's 17 ingredients in this cuck of yum. Before finding out if two heads are better than one. This is a unique test. There are no limits. This is going to be interesting. For the winner of MasterChef Australia, the chance to work with a culinary elite, a book deal, and $100,000 to make their dreams reality. Ten, but it's nice to have a room to myself. This beautiful large bedroom, big space for a little man. We're halfway through the competition. I'm really thrilled to still be here. Walking out of the house, I'm thinking today is mystery box challenge, and after that, invention challenge. So big day. Hopefully, I don't stuff up. kitchen today and all we see is a bench up the front we go oh god what is going on yeah this isn't a mystery box this is something different hello everyone and welcome back to the master chef kitchen standing in front of me are the 10 best amateur cooks in the country to become australia's first master chef you must show us you can not only cook but that you also know how to taste I guess I should have foreseen that the judges would mix things up as the numbers dwindle, but it's still a bit of a shock. And to tell you a little bit more about the details, Gary and George. Oh, oh, oh. the pot. Oh, Gary and George walked into the kitchen with this massive pot and we couldn't see what was inside it. I could smell it was maybe a bit fishy. Gently. Well, guys, taste test. Today's dish is something very close to my heart. Kakavia. What the bloody hell is kakavia? I haven't got a clue what kakavia is. Kakavia translates as fisherman's soup. The gakavya typifies the simplicity of Greek cuisine. There's 17 ingredients in this gakavya, and it's up to you guys to identify them. Oh, it smells beautiful. I can tell you that there are four types of seafood in this fisherman's soup. Oh, no. You have two minutes to identify as many flavours as you can. And the winner will be the person who names the most ingredients correctly. Jenny, you are Greek. Yeah. Feeling under pressure then? A little bit. On behalf of the whole Greek community in Australia? <laughs> Melbourne is enough. <laughs> <laughs> 
The winner of this taste test will be given a huge edge in today's main challenge, the invention test. Please form a line and I wish you the best of luck. Ho, you're up first. As I go up to taste, I'm feeling very nervous. It's a soup that I have absolutely no idea about. And I look down and I can see things that I can't taste. For instance, it's very pale, something in cream, but I know that Greeks don't use cream. I thought maybe a bay leaf, ouzo. Definitely could smell the saffron. Your two minutes has started now. And remember, there are four seafood items. I did suddenly realise I don't know my little clam slash vongole slash pipi thingamies very well. You're on 10 seconds, Poe. It's just the whole having to write and taste and think at the same time. It's actually much harder than you expect. Four, three, two, one. Bend down. Well done. Thank you, Poe. Chris, your turn. Let's get tasting. The first layer of soup I pull up, I see vongole, I see prawns, I see mussels and a piece of fish. That's obviously the four seafood elements. is enormous. I'm going to put the pen down and walk back. I'm feeling reasonably confident. You've made this soup a few times, Jenny. It's different. Yeah? Worried. I'm thinking, Jenny, this is your life. You're fighting for your life. Why I'm so worried. Eight, seven, six. I had a mental block the last 10 seconds. I just froze and I couldn't think. Lucas. I'd grab a spoon and eat the actual fish to see the texture. That's actually when I did believe it was snapper. Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out now. Justine. You're next. The soup it's had a bit of curdling going through it, so that's when I automatically thought there's got to be egg in here. My nerves just kick in. I thought, oh my God, please God, help me. I was so scared. When I tasted it, onions were there. I could taste the celery. I could see some saffron threads in there, but I wasn't too sure because I thought that could be a little bit of the skin of tomato, perhaps. I think it's important to demonstrate to the judges that we're learning and that we're growing throughout this competition. And I really, really want to demonstrate that I am learning and I am growing as a cook every day that I'm here. like fennel, I can taste garlic and onions, and I can also taste the saffron. Think about how you'd cook the soup yourself, uh, Sam. Yep. There's so much going on in that. Tom, you're up next. I really want to prove to George and Gary that I've developed my palate. Be careful you don't get your scarf in there, yeah? It looks like egg, but I'm confused because I would never have thought that there'd be egg in a fish soup. Andre, lucky last. <sighs> Is 
He's like, what do you mean, what is it? You're going to ask me what it is? <laughs> Took out a piece of star anise, and I haven't cooked with it before, and I stuck it in my mouth and chewed on it, and it was just really the, not the right thing to do. Something crunchy in there that you might want to take out of your mouth, that I is. reckon. I didn't want to spit it out on national television, so I just kept it in my mouth. You need to be moving along. My strategy in these sorts of things is get to a point where you don't know anymore and then just make it up. Still chewing. Chewing that little. Some good luck, mate. It's carrot. <laughs> it's carrot. He's chewing on star at ease. Yeah, mate. He ate one bit. We're finished tasting now. It's now time to find out the 17 ingredients that actually were in that soup. So the person that picked the most ingredients out of the 17 gets an advantage in the invention test. So let's have a look at what 17 ingredients you had. Number one. Saffron. Number two. Mint. Number three. Star anise. I didn't put star anise down, but I had it in my mouth and I was chewing on it. So that's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> Number four. Garlic. I'm really surprised that I've actually got quite a few of the ingredients. Number five. Shallots. Number six. Leek. The seventh ingredient was celery, and that was quite evident in the pot, so I was like, yes. <laughs> Number eight, egg. There was like these white little specks, so I knew it wasn't cream, it had to be egg. Number nine, olive oil. Number 10, lemon. At this point, I've got seven out of the ten ingredients, so I'm sort of thinking, not oh, bad poop. <laughs> Number 11. Ouzo. Jenny. You didn't get Ouzo. I thought I must have read them and I didn't even read it. And Jenny, Jenny. I know, I know I've done it. My mother used to say, you must be in love, something like that. Number 12. Stock. At this point, I've got seven ingredients, and I'm sure the other guys have chosen almost equally as well, so I think it's going to be quite tight. Number 13, fennel. When the judges get to their seafood, they reveal mussels first, and I've got mussels, so I'm really happy about that. Number 15, bongoli. Number 16, Number 17, Snapper. So I actually got all of the four seafood, which I'm pretty, pretty pleased about. Special mention today, Jenny and Andre, you're our bottom two. The worst scores of the group, Jenny, I... You got nine I know. out of a possible 17. Don't know how I didn't do it well. I'm really annoyed and I'm embarrassed. And Andre, you got eight. Those of you that had Snapper, step forward. So obviously the winner is from those people who picked the Snapper. So I was a bit chuffed that I did. Those that picked fennel can step forward. All I can keep thinking is why the hell could I just not write fennel? Take another step forward if you picked garlic. Garlic's such an important ingredient in Greek cooking. They love it to bits, so I was a bit embarrassed. We have a tie. You both scored 12 out of a possible 17 ingredients. But we need to pick a winner. And to do that, we've 
We've got a little surprise to test your food knowledge a little bit further. Chris, Tom, I'm going to lift the lid in a minute and you have to name the main ingredient to this food. The first one that names it wins today's challenge. Tom's got a great palate. I don't know, it, it could go either way. What is the main ingredient in? Taramusalata. Muscle, uh, mullet row. <laughs> Chris, well done. Chris was very quick. I mean, he knew exactly what the dish was, whereas I got confused with the visual. As winner of today's taste test, Chris, you get given a huge advantage in your next challenge, the invention test. I can now reveal that in today's invention test, you'll be competing in pairs. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How is that? You have the advantage of choosing who your partner will be, as well as who the other pairs will be. Oh, 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 look at him. He's, he's enjoying it. He's, he's enjoying it. it. He looks I'm absolutely going to be thinking strategically when I choose these pairs, so I'm going to try and make it as difficult for the other guys as I can. Chris, you'll start with your partner first. Who will that be? I'll choose Poe. She's a really good cook. She's really, really versatile, and so it's a bit of a no-brainer for me. Who is the next pair? Sam and Sandra. I think that could be a volatile little combination. The third duo, who would they be? Tom and Julie. I've got similar ideas about food. He's consistently great in the challenges and everything, so... I'm stoked. And the next pair, Chris? Lucas and Justine. They've both cracked under pressure before, and the possibility of one of them cracking again is a bit higher if they're together. Well, it's pretty obvious who the last pair is, Andre and Jenny. No, I actually am really happy that we're together. She's got an amazing knowledge. I think we're going to work well. I love the fact that we're going to be working in pairs. If you don't work well together, you could end up with a disaster. You've got your cooking partners, time to find out what the challenge entails. And for that, let me introduce back to the kitchen our favourite food critic, Matt Preston. Just keep the wild applause to a dull roar. <laughs> this is how today's invention test will work. Each pair will have to invent from scratch their own two-course meal. And today, as a special treat, you'll get free reign in the pantry. I'm so excited about it. I finally, I'll be able to create something that I really like and um, without being restricted as to what I can grab and I can't. Chris, as winner of the taste test, you and Poe get to go into the pantry first. It is quite a bit of an advantage to be able to go into the pantry first and choose what we want because there are limited ingredients, so it's first come, first serve. You'll have several minutes to devise a menu before heading to the pantry to choose your ingredients with your partner. From the winning team, one person will get to cook off against a celebrity chef for a fast track ticket through to the final week of MasterChef. Guys, head to your workstations. Lucas and I decide to make for an entree salmon ceviche and celery ac and crab remoulade. And for mains, we're doing quail with a port and echelite reduction. So, you know, quail is a great option. I reckon we're going to know. Mm. So we're settled. We're doing an entree and a main. Entree? Entree. I'll do a quail and duck salmon. Main. I can see it. That's lovely. Main. Crab. Open crab lasagna mm -hmm. with a crab bisque. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful, simple. Mm -hmm. I'll do the entree, which will be uh, cuttlefish bonbons, little fresh parcel, like little uh, lolly parcels. It'll be filled with cuttlefish with a zucchini cream. It's going to be a great thing in Italian cooking with a Greek. Plus, I love and passion for food. And I'll do the mine, which yeah. is actually the char grilled quail on the bed of a Jerusalem artichoke puree. Beautiful. 
Sounds like everyone else is going to do quietly. Yeah, that's strange. I mean, we've got so much choice. What, what do you think for an entree, maybe? Entree, scallops with uh, blood sausage and um, apples. And the main course will be crispy skinned ocean trout with crushed potatoes and a mussel sauce. We're going to make a main and a dessert. I know this is an invention test and I know that some of the other teams are thinking about quail, yeah. but they're not going to approach it the same way as we are. We're going to do a pan fried quail with roasted fennel and orange. Um, so I'm going to do the raspberry clafouti. It's a baked sort of eggy dessert, but it's just a little bit spongy. It's like a spongy thing. brulee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chris and Poe, time to head into the pantry and choose your ingredients. I grab the basics for my dish. And Poe needs all the baking ingredients, and flour, sugar, eggs, raspberries. It means so much to me to get through this. You have 30 seconds to go. I'm not feeling pressure against my ability, but it's nerves, you know, there's a lot riding on this. Lucas and Justine, you're up next. I'm here to win this contest. For me, it's to get in the top nine now, and then from there go to the top eight, and then from there go to the top seven. So we'll see what happens. Is there another little crab? That's it, in the freezer? In the freezer. Yeah. Which one? Two pairs going to elimination, one pair winning. The pressure is definitely on. Hopefully we can cook the best dish we can. Andre and Jeannie, off you go. Well, I definitely don't want a bad invention challenge. I'm going to make sure that actually I'm not in that bottom two team. You have 30 seconds to go. 30 seconds. Done. Now it's our turn to head into the pantry. I'm not ready to go home. There's still a long way to go in this competition. You have 10 seconds to go. We've got the crab. Where's the crab? All I need to focus on now is actually doing a great job. Sandra, that makes you last in the pantry. Your two minutes start now. Having been in the bottom three last week, I do have a lot to prove. I'm hoping that I can nail this challenge. This is a unique test in the challenges that we've had so far. You have one hour to cook two beautiful dishes and your time starts now. Chris and I agreed that we were going to really gun it right away just because we know how time creeps up on you really quickly. Rough is fun. Right, guys, Lucas, Justine, yes. what are we cooking? We're doing an entree, mate. Yep. We're doing a salmon with a celeriac. Celeriac and crab remoulade. OK. And the main? And the main. Braised quail with a port and shallot sauce. Sam and I have decided that I'm going to be making the entree. Scallops with black sausage pudding and um, caramelised apples. Sam is going to be cooking trash with some crushed potatoes. What can go wrong here, Sam? Obviously cooking with fish, you don't want to overcook your fish. Yeah. That is going to be the hero of the main course. So. Beautiful. Nice, the dishes we're making today for the entree will do a warm duck and quail salad, and Julie will make an open crab lasagna with a crab bisque. Is everything like that? Yeah, it's just not coming up very nicely. Andre, yep. tell us what your menu is. The entree dish is a cuttlefish filled little bonbon of pasta with a zucchini cream. Okay. Uh, the second dish, it's grilled quail with Jerusalem artichoke puree. Okay. In so the you're room. doing an entree and a main? Yes, that's so right. Got... 
Chris, Poe, starting with the main. What is that, Chris? The main is going to be quail breast cooked on the crown and then just finished in the pan. We're going to stuff the legs with blood sausage. We're going to brace some fennel. We've got some orange segments. Four out of five teams are doing quail. Does that concern you? No, because we'll do it well. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. So what's in that? It's a raspberry clafouti. Oh, clafouti. Yeah. Oh, you're doing dessert. I'm yes, doing dessert. You're doing dessert. Yippee! We've got a dessert. OK, guys, you're just a little over halfway through. Amazing how time flies when you're having fun, isn't it? Justine's finishing off the braise, which I then have to carve when it comes out. The potatoes are happening. These are looking really good. That to release the meat. Yep, and then turn it inside out. Today we've actually gone for something way more difficult than probably what the others are doing. The single most difficult part of my dish is stuffing the, the quail legs with blood sausage. Yeah, it's a bit hard. Yeah, that's better. My pasta's wrapped like a little bonbon bomb or lolly wrapper. And the judges come around and comment that it doesn't look good. Andre, so. yes. Yeah. This pasta dough for your bonbons is yeah. really dry. I don't know what happened because it took on a lot more egg than it should have. That's really wrong. I don't know what you've done there. It acted strangely, so I'll do another one and see how it goes. Yep. Excellent. Right, guys, you've got 15 minutes to go. It's got to be like silk. Sieved? Silk. So who are we most worried about, George? Sandra and Sam, that, you know, they've dropped their olive oil on the ground. Well, I'm watching them and they're not talking to each other. There's a bit of communication going on in the room and those two, they've sort of gone into themselves. So Tom and Julie, they've got the duck and the quail together for the entree. I don't know about that, Gary. Do you know what it reminds me of? Is that stupid Christmas dish that I hear every year and everybody thinks it's clever. A goose stuffed with a turkey, yeah. stuffed with a duck. Oh, no. Andre? And Jeannie? Yep. Been a panic there, not good. That's right. Lucas and Justine, just a phrase quail when you've got an hour. We didn't see it going on. They could run out of time and, yeah. and it won't be up. Chris and Poe, Gary, very confident Chris, yeah. isn't he? And you asked him, everybody else is cooking quail. Yeah. What do you think? Mine's going to be the best. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's really, that's strong, that's confident. OK, guys, you've got five minutes, so you're down to the wire once again. Doesn't it feel great? Whoa! Five minutes to go, we're in a bit of a panic. Poe's madly trying to pipe Grand Marnier and chocolate uh, ganache into the raspberries. I just end up throwing the raspberries on this huge plate and it just looks very clumsy and quite unattractive. It just becomes frantic. Sandra had sc cooked her scallops or a blood sausage yet, and I thought, bloody hell. So I'm plating as quickly as I can because time's running out. I've got to get my bisque into a jug, and I really wanted it to look a bit neater than it was. OK, this is it. We're 10 seconds. Nine. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You've just completed this week's invention test. You cooked in pairs and you prepared a two course meal of your own creation. Your judges, Gary, George and Matt, will now taste your dishes. Andre and Jenny, you're up first. Jenny and I are the first to take our dishes to the judges for judgement. I'm probably the most nervous I've been um, in front of the judges. We'll taste the entree first. The pasta's really soft and the filling's quite mild. The calamari and the bread pan or filling. Interesting. Good combination. I knew that the flavours were there. I was confident in that food. You 
you made the pasta twice. Well done, Andre, that's a smart idea. The pasta's rolled out nice and thin. The bonbon's an interesting shape for a filled pasta. Satiny pasta, good filling, no flavors dominating. Zucchini stands out against those subtle flavors. Just need a little bit more attention in how it looks on the plate. In terms of contrast, if I came into your restaurant and opened up the menu, and I would have probably picked that as a starter, and I probably would have picked that as a main course. In terms of flavor, I like it. What I don't like is the bones that you've left in on the back. Not really that good. Dangerous little babies, those. I'm interested by the presentation. I think you've created some drama. It does look to me like the Kama Sutra of quail, with all those legs flicking in the air like that. I looked at Andre and we sort of tap each other on the back. So I was very happy with the comments overall. Next up, Lucas and Justine. It's zingy, it's punchy. That is a cracker entree. Brilliant. <laughs> <It's> good. <laughs> it's the complete dish, so well done. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Congratulations. It's a wonderful feeling when you put your heart and soul into something and someone really appreciates it, and that's what food's about. The quail itself I was a bit worried about because I didn't think you'd be able to cook it for long enough to get it tender. It's certainly tender, there's no doubt about that, and it's really pleasant with that sweet, jammy port wine and shallot sauce. Thank you. Thank you very much. They liked it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is really good. And now it's our turn to take our dishes to the judges. Good luck. Thanks. It's nerve wracking. This is as nervous as I've been all day. The issue is one of subtlety. The scallop and the black pudding together are a great combination. All the dish needs is some subtleness of sweetness and some subtleness of acidity from the apple. And what we have here is a bit too much like a spoonful of apple crumble without the crumble. I thought, my God, it's got quite a bit of apple. I should have put less. I had to let go and just accept criticism. Trout is cooked beautifully. Well done, Sam. You cooked that? Yeah. Good job, mate. George commented that the fish was cooked extremely well, which is what I was hoping for, really. Chris and Poe. beer bar, Chris, and I'm presented with that, I'm going, rip off. Because, man, that does not look like the generous Chris food that we've come to know and love. It's a bit fiddly, it's a little bit diffused, and I'd like to see some more generosity, especially, Chris, coming from you. I let myself down. I should have chosen a dish that I was more comfortable with.
You were the only ones that did a dessert. Admirable. I like that. Can I just apologise for the plating? It's a little bit clumsy. You've got this overly heavy sort of pudding batter on the bottom. It should be lighter. And finally, Julie and Tom, please bring your dishes forward. So, let's get stuck into the entree. The meat's very delicate and it's taken over by that sort of acidic and green taint of that very sharp salad underneath. So it's a bit of a disappointment. We're in trouble. I've let down the team with the entree and I'm getting a sinking feeling. That bisque. <laughs> Mate, that's good. It's great. It's great. After our entree cops a bit of a hiding, our main course gets some really lovely positive comments. So that gives me some hope that maybe we're not going to be in the bottom two teams. The judges have tasted all your dishes. They must now decide which pair deserves to win and which two pairs performed the worst. I'm always on edge. It's that feeling of have I done enough or have I not done enough? Your judges, Gary, George and Matt, have had time to taste all your dishes. And they've now made a decision as to which pair made the best two-course meal of the day. They've also agreed which two pairs were the worst performers. From the winning team, one person will get to cook off against a celebrity chef for a fast-track ticket through to the final week of MasterChef. The two teams who cooked the worst today will have to come back tomorrow and face the ugly process of elimination in the pressure test. I'm about to call out some names. If I call out your name, please step forward. Sam and Sandra. I thought we'd done enough today. I really did. I just thought, God, obviously my best may not be good enough. You're safe in this competition for a little longer. Well done. Well done. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> well oh, done. That's horrible. <laughs> well done. You can now head home. Well done, guys. Well done. Good luck, everyone. Cheers. It's a huge relief. It's a fine line between being safe and being in the bottom four. I would have liked to have won, but it does feel good. Andre and Jenny, please step forward. You two are also safe in this competition for a little longer. Well done. There's relief that we're going home and you could just see Jenny's head tick over. I was really worried because I really love what I do. It's very important to me. Why is it so important to you? Oh, it's food has been uh, more than a passion. <laughs> well done to both of you. You can now head home. Thank you very much. Well done, <laughs> it's disappointing to see safe pairs walking out because you actually have the realisation that I'm not going to be safe. Lucas, Justine. Congratulations. <laughs> you cooked the best two-course meal today, overall. <laughs>
working with Lucas, my best mate in the house, and winning together was just the most amazing feeling. So it was a pleasure to watch the two of you working together as a proper team. Really, Jesus me, you come together. Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, it is, it's Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> you performed a beautiful job, well done. One of you will be cooking off against one of Australia's top chefs. If you win, you have earned the right to go through to the last week of this competition. Justine Lucas, you have to decide who that person's gonna be. You do it. I want you to do it. Before Lucas could make a comment, I'm like, no, you're going. I've had my turn to cook off against Guy Grassi. I had the most amazing time doing it and I wanted him to feel that. Okay, guys, I'm gonna give it a crack. Congratulations, you can now head home. See you guys, well done. Good job. <sighs> I'm very excited. I think it's gonna be a great day. And uh, I'm gonna be terribly nervous though. Standing before us are possibly four of the best cooks in the competition. Disappointing. Chris. You look pissed off. I am pissed off, but I'm disappointed and annoyed at myself as well. well I thought too much about it being an invention test and tried to do some different things. Obviously, getting beaten by some simple dishes woke me up. Because in the end, it's just about what they taste like, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, Tom, your entree is the reason why Julie's standing here right now. I can understand why I'm standing here. And I'm, more importantly, more disappointed that because of me, Julie's standing here. Julie, third time in the pressure test. Is that an advantage or is it time for you to go home? What it feels like is that I'm continually letting you down and letting myself down. Do you think you've got what it takes to win? I know I've got what it takes to win. Tomorrow, you will run the gauntlet of the pressure test. I'm not ready to go home, and I'm not going to go home. I'll face the pressure test and do everything my ability to cook my way out of this mess I've put myself into. Three of you will cling to your places in this competition, and one of you will be going home. I am freaking out because I'm so not ready to go home. Tomorrow night on MasterChef Australia. Today is not going to be an easy day for any of you. Chris, Poe, Julie and Tom face the pressure test. Uh, how hard can it really be? But they've never felt pressure like this before. Everyone couldn't believe that she was falling apart. Just do it, OK? Because you can do it. Plus, later this week, Lucas cooks off with celebrity chef Ben O'Donoghue. Ben, you ready for it? Ready to go. Someone's going home on the back of this. And two teams are shaken and stirred, catering for the glitterati. Me and Gary have never been so nervous. We need to see the food done.